Yo, peace was good. Welcome to another hip hop album review. This is part 195. The album that we'll be reviewing today is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, BG Knockout and Drace's only album together titled Real Brothers released in 1995. Um, just let you guys know, this is the Japanese reissue. Uh, this is not the OG pressing. Because um, the OG pressing goes for a lot of money online. Um, as far as like $50 and shit. So, I ain't paying that. But I, I, I think I bought this like a couple years ago. I want to say around 2014, 2015. So, but fuck it. You know what I mean? Um, but for those who don't know who they are, they're a hip-hop duo from Compton and Watts. Um, I'd say, yeah, because I think Dracer... Even though they're brothers, um, I think they, I think Watts lived in, I, I think Dre still lived in Watts for a while, and um, BG Knockout was raised in Compton, so, um, but I always felt like they were like more of a Compton-based group. Um, they, they got their start back in the early 90s, uh, particularly with the late, great Easy e um, They were on the song, um, Real Motherfucking G's. Everybody knows that song that, they were going after, you know, the whole, you know, pretty much Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre and shit like that. Very controversial song, but very dope, in my opinion. It was done barking back at um, Dr. Dre for the song um, Dre Day. You know, everybody knows that song. It's a classic song. So, um, but yeah, man, um, after Dr. Dre, after that, um, after that, you know, they started working on this album. Um... The story with this though, it's not released, this album was not released on Ruthless Records, it was actually released on Def Jam. Um, I think what happened was uh, BG Knockout said in an interview, uh, DJ Vlad to be exact, uh, he was saying about how um, BG, he went to county jail for, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, He's still getting over a cold. He um, went to jail for like some unpaid tickets or whatever, right? And you know he needed some he needed some money or whatever. And I think at the time, Easy E he had his he had his hands tied. No, no, he was sick. He was sick from um he was still sick, you know, from the aid from AIDS and shit like that. So he was like in and out of the hospital and stuff like that. And so like you know he needed he needed to do something. So um I, there was like some type of executive. Who was uh, part of a uh, record label called Outburst Records, which is, was a subsidiary, a, a subsidiary of Def Jam. Um, it's the same record label that Domino, um, yes, the same Domino, the song uh, Def Jam, um, Ghetto Jam, and uh, Sweet Potato Pie, and Long Beach Stang. Well, that guy signed, ended up signing BG Knocker and Dracer. And I think uh, Rufus. <coughs> Excuse me. I think Easy E tried to sign them back into Ruthless Records, but then you know he ended up dying from AIDS, and then you know ended up releasing this album on uh, Def Jam Outburst Records. All right. Oh shit. So there's three singles of the album. The singles are, um, I believe, Jealousy was a single. Um, DPG K, which is um, Dog Pound Gangsters Killers. And um, 50 50 Love, I think that, those are the three singles of the album. Alright? You know how I get down? I'm gonna go through some of the tracks, but before I start, I'll show you guys what the album looks like. That's what the album looks like. Just like the original pressing. Um, my only gripe with this um, release is this right here. Looks very cheap, you know? I don't like that. I, I really don't like that. I'm very, <coughs> excuse me, very disappointed with that. But you know, it is what it is. I'm not gonna complain. Doesn't really affect it, you know what I mean? But I just wish it had the original version, you know what I mean? Kinda looks like a like a greatest hits cheap type of cheap joint that you would get like at a dollar store or some shit like that, you know? But um go through the CDs. Also too, um, is this. If I'm not mistaken, the original version, the OG pressing, is brown, you know what I mean? So but you know it is what it is. You know, pretty simple. But the booklet is the same, which is which is what I love, right? And what's cool about the Japanese version, um, it comes with this. And, you know, it comes, you know, it's in Japanese, but it comes with the lyrics, okay? For all the songs. I think that's pretty cool, right? 
I thought that was pretty cool, and that that's that's what I like about it. Open it up. So this is what the album looks like with the track list and the shout outs and all that good stuff. Alright. In the back, you see them right here chilling. You see uh BG Knockout. You know what I mean? You see BG Knockout just chilling. There's Jerry Crows. See them just chilling. You know, probably by the crib and shit. Alright. Alright. Um let's see. Uh producers on the album. Producers is Dr. Jam and Manners for Real. I've mentioned them before. Uh, they've worked on um, MC Ren's uh, Shock of the Hour album, which uh, we also did a review on um, on the Speaking Cloud podcast. I also did one on on my uh, on my channel a couple years back, so I did a review for that. Um, so I said Dr. Jam and Manners for Real on the production. Uh, Vic C. Not sure who that is. Uh, Charlie B. Uh, Charlie B. Again, like I said before. Uh, Rhythm D. Shout out to Rhythm D. He also did production um, on uh, MC Ren's um, Shock of the Hour. I, I, I also believe he did production on um, the Kiss My Black Ass EP. I could be wrong about that. So it's, it's been a while since I reviewed that um, project. But um, yeah, so Rhythm D. Dr. Jim again, like I said before. Uh, t- 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 Charlie B. I mentioned. Yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Um, those are the producers of the album. So, yeah, so you pretty much know what you're getting yourself into. Um, features on the album. Uh, let's see. T- 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 uh, background vocals. Lati. Uh, LV and Lati. LT. Um. LV, I believe, is the same cat that did the Gangsters Paradise with um, with Coolio. He's the the singer. He actually has his own album that dropped, I believe, in '96 and '97. I need to get a hard copy of that. Uh, let's see what else. I think that's pretty much it, fellas. All right, so that's pretty much it. You guys know how I get down. I'm gonna go do some of the tracks as usual when we put this back. All right. Alright, put this right correctly. Alright, you know how I get down. I'm gonna go through some of the tracks. Um, track one, uh, Every Day, All Day. Pretty dope way to start this um, the album. It has like a dope beat. Um, love the drums on it. Um, in this song, they kind of go, they go at um, Dog Pound. They they go after the Dog Pound. Um, one of the Snoop Dogg and, and um, the Dog Pound, where he says, um, uh, it's actually a Drake's the solo track, and there's a line where I wrote where he says, uh, give me a cell with Snoop Doggy Dog, so I can rub my dick off between that bitch's sugar walls, mad homo, but whatever, niggas must think, I'm struggling, but I, before I got 10 points, and I own my own publishing, so who the fuck should I fear, so what I got from that line was pretty much... How, um, obviously he's not gonna do that, literally, I mean, that'd be kind of crazy, but what I got from that, because it was no secret that Suge Knight, um, was pretty much extorting his own artist, you know what I mean, like, where they weren't really getting paid except for Dr. Dre, because Dr. Dre, you know, he was a business-minded, you know what I mean, um, Snoop, yeah, Snoop Dogg, you know, at the time, you know, he was facing his murder charge and stuff like that, and so, you know, he couldn't really... He couldn't really um, celebrate his success with Doggy Style because, like I said, he was going through that trial. So all the money that he made from that album was going to lawyer fees, you know, and that's what it was with that. And um, and you know, after he got out of jail, um, when he dropped Dog the Dog Fight album in '96, he didn't really get any compensation from that album. So what Shug Knight would do is he would instead of giving you know Snoop Dogg money, um. You know, he would give him. They would. You know, Shook would give Snoop Dogg like money, um, like cars and houses and you know, all the luxury stuff, but except for cash. You know what I mean? So which you know left him broken in debt and stuff like that. Um, and you know, as far as like owning the publishing, you know, everybody knows that. You know, Shook Knight. When it comes to, like the earlier albums, like the Chronic, Doggy Style, Dog Pound, um, Shook Knight gets um, 
a big chunk of that money and stuff like that. So, um, you know, so you know things like that. So, so that's no secret. Everybody knows about that. So that's uh, every day, all day. Pretty dope beat. Uh, like I said, dope way to start the album. Guns are blazing. You know, going at you know Shook, um, Snoop Dogg, and you know stuff like that. Um, yeah. Track two, jealousy. Um, pretty dope joint right there. Um, what I got from that song was you know just dumb. You know, being hated on by sometimes by their own peers and people in their own city, you know, you know, just people just hating on them because they got put on and they did it, you know, saying, oh, they, they, yo, they busters, they bust out as marks and stuff like that because, you know, people expecting a handout just because you know them and you expect to give them a handout. Nah, you gotta work for yours. And then he's like, nah, like just because, you know, I'm famous doesn't mean I have to give you money just because you're struggling. And, you know, so, you know, cats be hating on them, you know, to the point where they'll spread rumors about them, talk shit about them, or even try to possibly harm them, you know, and that's pretty much what I got with the song Jealousy, and if I'm not mistaken, that's a, that's the third single of the album, because, like, like I said, Jealousy, 5050 Love, and DPG Gangster are the singles of the album, um, yeah, pretty dope, alright, um, dope's, uh, bass line, too. Uh, track three, who's the G? Um, definitely one of my favorite tracks of the album. That is um, uh, BG Knockout solo track. Um, definitely one of the best tracks of the album. Just him going in, um, lyrically, just dope, dope, dope. Um, one thing about this album is the lyricism, the, the production, the, the, the lyricism is just phenomenal, man, because. Um, I always, I always knew they were dope, but then like you know, reviewing this, like just like writing notes and um, just looking, and it's just like listening to the lyrics. I'm like, damn, these dudes, their pen game was kind of crazy. You know what I mean? So I really fucks with that. Uh, track four, um, Compton, Compton swinging. Um, in this song, they, you know, they kind of go at, they go at dog pound, um, dog, um. The dog pound, they go after them. Um, there's a line where he says, um, it was from Drayster when he says, um, now we gotta hear this trap from this buster named Daz, but Daz ain't nothing but a monk who be bugging out. Stop the monkey shit, put my fist in your monkey mouth. I mean, and it has a dope beat too. Um, pretty dope, you know, very dope beat. You know what I mean? I really fucks with that joint right there. Compton swinging, very, very, very dope. Um, track five, that's a puzzle. Pretty dope track, you know, just them talking about how life is hard and, you know, especially you grew up in the hood and, like, how um, you're not really given a lot of opportunities, you know, um, compared to other people. So you kind of have to figure out how to make ends meet, whether it's, you know, joining the street life, getting a nine to five, you know, it's up to you, you have to figure it out. And that's pretty much what I got from the song um, Life's a Puzzle, all right? Um, that's track five. Um... Track six, uh, BG Knockout, self-titled, um, pretty dope track, this is a braggadocio track, um, nothing to it, pretty dope joint, I like that joint, um, track seven, um, is Compton Ho, that's a Drayster solo track, and, you know, he's just talking about him being a gigolo, you know, just him being a player, a gigolo, a male ho, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's just him talking about loving girls with big asses and stuff like that, so do I, I think most everybody that watches this love girls with big asses, some people don't, some people like big tits, you know, some people like, you know, fat pussies and type, you know, all that good stuff, but he talks all about that in that song, uh, Cop and Hope, I thought that was pretty cool, um, track eight, uh, Mike Check, um, definitely one of my favorite songs of the album as well, um, they pretty much talk about what they go through as far as like living a gangster life, the everyday um everyday living of as, as being a gangster, what they go through, what is, you know, making ends meet by like, you know, doing illegal activities to, to gain income. Or, you know, you know, trying to like take away get um trying to kill off rivals and shit like that. And that's pretty much what I got for that joint. <coughs> Excuse me. That's what I got from that joint too. Um, track nine, Compton and Watts, um, pretty dope joint. I could definitely see that being a single, um, but it wasn't. Um, 
in that song, um, I, I felt like that was like a diss towards Snoop Dogg, particularly only because um, there was a line where, um, what was it? Um, where BG he um, expresses that you know Compton and Long Beach don't ever, don't get along, um, could never get along, and that's obviously because of you know Snoop and you know and the dog pound and you know Warren G and all them cats and stuff like that. So. Um, you know, that's definitely, like, on some street shit, you know what I mean? Um, but it's just, the song also, you know, is just representing Compton and, and Watts and stuff like that. Because, like I said, I think Drayster at one point lived in Watts for a little bit. then, you know, because they're both, they're biological brothers and stuff like that. So, um, but, yeah, pretty much, that's pretty much it on that song. Compton and Watts, pretty dope joint. Uh, track 10, 50, 50 Love. Um... And this song, you know, um, 50, 50 Love, what I got from that, I, it's definitely relatable. Um, I definitely live, I, I definitely live with this, um, principle. If I show you love back, I expect the same love back. But unfortunately, that doesn't always work like that in real life. And, um, that's what they talk about this, um, with this song on 50, 50 Love. Um, it's definitely relatable because, like, um, I've shown people mad love. And um, I never got the same love back, you know. Some, but that's not always the case. But you know, every once in a while, you'll meet people that's ungrateful and shit like that. So, but that's yeah, fifty fifty love. Um, track eleven, real brothers. In the song, you know, they talk about how um, they how they grew up. They live in a single parent home, and you know, they had to do what they had to do to um, make ends meet. Like yeah, their, their moms raised them but also the streets raised them as well and that's pretty much what i got from that song um real brothers you know just told about how they grew up and stuff like that together uh track 12 um uh do or die in the song they talk about one of their homeboys um you know they get they, they got into some beef um his homeboy ended up getting sh one of their homeboys got shot and they trying to seek revenge for his homeboy against um, shot. So pretty much looking for the dudes that shot his boys, shot their boys, excuse me, and um, going after them. And that's what I got from the song, um, Do or Die. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, track 13, Take a Ride. Really, really love this joint. It definitely has like that sunny vibe, going to the beach, um, having a dope barbecue, West Coast style. You know what I'm saying? With 40s and stuff like that. A cooler for the 40s. Um, a refrigerator full of 40s. St. Ives. Uh, Hurricane. Um, Old English. Whatever you... Mickey's. You know, whatever you, whatever the case you... Um, whatever you drink. You know what I mean? Um, it just has that really um, sunny California vibe. The beat for that shit is dope. Um, that easily could have been a single. You know what I mean? Um, that's what I got from that joint. Definitely one of my favorite joints of the album. Um... Yeah, so it's just like you know you drop like I said you drive into the beach in a in a drop top in a convertible, or whatever, just having a good time with your boys. You know what I mean? Going to the beach, that kind of thing. It just has that vibe. Um, track fourteen, down goes another nigga. That's one of my favorite. That's actually like my favorite track off the album. Um, love the baseline, really dark, really dark, sinister baseline. Um. That song, I could definitely see that being on um, Easy E's uh, Straight Off the Streets of Motherfucking Compton. Like, it just definitely has that vibe um, on that album, on, of that song. I really enjoyed that joint right there. Uh, definitely one of my favorite tracks, if not my favorite track off the album. Um, really, really enjoyed it. I could listen to that song all day. Um, and the last song, uh, DPG K, um, Dog Pound Gangster Killers. Um, yeah, this was, a, I believe this is the second single of the album. You know, they they go after Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, and they go after, they, yeah, they go after the Dog Pound. And there is a video for that as well. Um, overall, very, very dope album. Very underrated. Um, it's funny because um, yesterday we did a podcast on Speaker Cloud Podcast. And, um, you know, I was, I was talking very highly about this album. And we also did a review on... Um, Dog, um, the Dog Pound's Dog Food album a couple of months back, I think like two months ago or whatever, we did a review on that, and I kind of felt like those those two albums, this album and Dog Food, 
kind of goes hand in hand. But if I had to choose out of the two, I would choose this album over Dog Pound because, um, or Dog Food, I should say, um, just based on the lyricism and the production, man. Um, Rhythm D, like they're Dr. Jam, you know, because I'm a big fan of Shaka Yao by MC Ren, so. Pretty much what you get from that album, you kind of get with this album, but not as dark, but it's still grimy. And I just love the production on this album, the lyricism and stuff like that. But um, yeah, man, very dope album. If you could get your hands on this album, I highly recommend getting this album. Um, unfortunately, this is an album I don't really hear too, too many people talk about. Uh, I think it's a, it's a it's a couple of factors. Um, one being the fact that. The fact that um, they were filled with Easy E, because you know at that time, you know, um, Death Row, they were like the top honcho when it came to the record. They was like them and, and um, Bad Boy Records at that time. But in the West Coast, it was all about Death Row, because Death Row was running shit. And, um, you know, so sort the of bias and stuff like that. Um, you know, their affiliation with Easy E could have been a factor as well. Also, too, um, the fact that it wasn't released on Ruthless Records, it was released on Outburst slash Def Jam Records, I uh, played a factor too, uh, which is unfortunate because um, a lot of people are missing out on this album. Yeah, you can find it on YouTube, listen digitally if you have to. Um, if you can find it for a decent price, which I mean depends, you know if you. I mean it depends, you know what I mean. I've seen some go for like you know thirty and up, you know what I mean, but. Um, because even the Japanese reissue is out of print. It goes for a lot of money, too. But um, this is... I highly, highly, highly recommend this album, man. Um, very, very dope. I, 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 it's an album that I can listen to um, throughout. I don't have to skip a track or anything like that. You know what I mean? But that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed that review. Uh, definitely stay tuned for more. All right? Peace.